Hello guys and welcome to the Dojo Cast. This is episode 16 of the Dojo Cast. No more windmills. Hey guys, I'm your host Adrian or Kid Gear here. Today I'm joined by Josh or We Four Ninety Three. What's up, Josh? How are you? Nothing much. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. It's been a. We actually this weekend went by pretty fast. It's already Sunday. It should be or what is it? Saturday. Saturday morning for you, right? Uh, it's Saturday night for me. Saturday night. Is it past? No, it's not past midnight. Is it down there? Is it? Uh yeah, it's three a.m. Oh jeez, yeah. See, so he's up late. Uh, for me, it's only around six o'clock. I got school tomorrow. It's Sunday here, but this sh- uh, this usually gets uploaded every Monday. I don't know. I think we missed the episode last week. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, because there's some issues there. I know the one before that we had some technical issues. So hopefully everything gets uh, you know everything goes smooth on this recording. But anyways, uh, let's go along with the stories we had. How much stories do we have here? Like three, six, seven. Think about seven. Yeah, seven stories for you guys. And the first one is dealing with Dig. Now this comes from Mashable over at Mashable.com. Dig bands. That's D I W G dot com. Uh, you know the popular uh, what would you call it a news site or a user voted news uh, social news yeah social news yeah so uh dig they banned the uh, rss submissions and uh this is a letter to the publishers the dig product manager mike sieri i'm guessing uh, announced that he the, the trouble uh the, the troubled social news website will no longer accept content via submitted via rss now i'm guessing this is for like if you uh isn't it before you can put like an rss feed in there and anytime anything new would come out it would submit it automatically to dig yeah, with the new uh, V3 on Dig, they allowed you to just, like, verify your site with Dig, and you could put an RSS feed. So then anytime you publish, like, a blog post or, or whatever, it automatically be submitted. Yeah, and that's a really useful, especially for something like if you want, you know, if you do a how-to guide or something and you want it to be posted up Dig automatically, uh, you know, it's one thing you could have used it for. And then obviously Dig from Dig, that can, you know, branch out to a whole bunch of other users, users and then you can get a lot of views. But now they're saying that a lot of people, you know, misuse the feature it shows only that 4.5% of Dig's top news only comes, you know, only 4.5 comes from RSS submissions. So they're saying they're taking it out, they're banning it. Uh, you know, there's like abuse of it. People are spamming the content and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, they're going to be taking the feature out just because it was growing heavily abused. So um, I don't know. I, I think it's a really cool feature. That's really like you know, like you said, if you uh, use it on a blog or something like that. But um, I don't know. I, I guess too many people. Is, you know, it says four only 4.5 percent came. Uh, you know, from uh, what do you call it, RSS submission, so it's not too much of a dent if you remove it. But uh, what do you think? Do you like? Do you ever get to try the feature? Yeah, I uh, I set up, I think Adrian's tech blog on it, or I set up one of the blogs on it uh, a while back when mm-hmm. they first introduced it, and I was really excited about the feature because previously, anytime you publish a new article, you or you one of the users it. has to manually submit it. Yeah, you know, if you want pain. it to be on Dig, so the, the RSS was a great way to have it in there automatically. But I mean, just having it automatically added is a great way for spammers you know because there's, mm-hmm. there's no captchas and there's no limits yeah or it just goes whatnot. right through yeah dang so yeah i mean that's so you said it's been out since v3 right the, the old uh, version three whenever the new revision came out a couple yeah, of, two or three months back two months maybe and you can read the the full text because he actually sent out a full letter about you know uh why you know they had to do this and what you know the issues and how much it's really affecting dig so, and he also says, you know, of course, you can feel free to contact him with any questions or thoughts. So, this is some news via Mashable, some social news, uh, I guess, social media news. But anyways, with that, uh, let's move on to our next story. This is our main story, actually. Uh, I'm actually getting to it early. Uh, Guitar Hero, the, you know, the popular, uh, I guess you can call it, game series that's uh, made by Activision. Now, this, you know, branched out to many, many games. Uh, you know, Guitar Hero, Band Hero, all this crazy stuff. And isn't it, is Rock Band also made by Activision, right? Rock no, Band? Uh, Rock Band they, no, 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 they're, they're, they're like, sit, sit, I forgot the company. They're, yeah, there's something else. But um, uh, anyways, um, sales, basically, I'm guessing. But I guess, so the issue with this was, it says here that um, starting, I guess, or they announced this Thursday that they'll be stopped they'll stop manufacturing the game after its introduction, which was back in 2005, the original Guitar Hero. And it became, you know, a huge hit because everybody, you know, is one of those things you uh, got to use. It's like one of, I, I would think this was one of the first games that really utilized that whole, uh, what do you call it? Oh, no, I guess there was okay. Dance Dance Revolution back then. Yeah, this was one of the first games, it's like, to introduce, a, like, a third-party controller. Yeah. Like, is that what you... It's yeah, one of the like best, that. the first games to have user interaction, kind of, physical yeah. interaction. Yeah. So you really felt like you were a part of it. You know, you had the guitar, you had all the keys, and you had, like, you know, the whammy bar and all that cool stuff. But 
Uh, and this came out for all the platforms, and it was, it was pretty huge in the beginning. It raked in about $1.7 billion in just three years. And, uh, and to play the game, users would get shell out for a guitar-shaped controller in the software, obviously. Uh, and then new songs, they would make money off new songs to be purchased in the like marketplaces and stuff like that to get extra money. And this competed with in 2007 with the Rock Band, which was a huge one because it introduced multiple instruments. Um, but sales peaked in 2008, and the title struggled since. The drop off isn't specific to you know certain titles in rock uh, in uh, Guitar Hero and stuff like that. But um, they did. Uh, they're saying I guess because money is an issue, so Activision will be uh, closing you know all the Rock Band series from Metallica, Aerosmith, Van Halen, Warriors of Rock. All of those are going to be stopped in production just because you know there's i guess i think the problem here was more that like you know they had a good game they had guitar hero they came up with guitar hero, guitar hero one guitar hero two and so on but i think they kind of over pushed it in the market you know they added all these extra games they came out with like band hero and yeah. they came out with all these different theme dj hero dj hero yeah which actually dj hero was all right because that was kind of a different different it was a different spin. take on it yeah. Yeah, but the, the Van Halen and the Beatles and Aerosmith, those were all the exact yeah. same games. You just could have just, they could have just had download packs yeah. for the original one. Like DLC, yeah, DLCs for like a whole different like song pack and stuff like that. But yeah, they kind of added a whole spin to. It. I guess like, cause like stuff like the Beatles, that's kind of like a niche product. You know, it's like somebody would only buy that if they like the Beatles and their songs. Yeah. Because you're only gonna get the Beatles songs. You're not gonna get anything else. So. Yeah. I uh, know. I mean, Rock Band. They only have what Rock Band, the original and Rock Band Beatles, right? That's it. I think that's all they have. They don't have uh, any other. I, I didn't know Rock Band came out. I don't think there's Rock Band Beatles, is there? I think, I think the Beatles are Rock Band. I thought or there was that... only just a regular Rock Band because I know the Beatles is on Guitar Hero. I think. Let me see. Beatles, I'm not sure. Rock Band. But uh, also, uh, Harmonics makes Rock Band. There you go. Yeah, yeah. They so Harmonics. Harmonics also, yeah. Or Harmonics. They made, yeah. Yeah, they made uh, the Beatles rock band also, so that's one of them that they came out okay. with. But, like, they didn't push it like, I mean, like, what do you call that? Uh, Activision did. Lot. Yeah, and Activision they came out with, like, Warriors of Rock and all that. So, I mean, yeah. it was a good game. It was really great. I, and I still have my Guitar Hero. I think I have Guitar Hero 3, but I also have Rock Band. I don't know. I, see, I play Rock Band more days now because it's pretty much the same concept and stuff like that. But uh, it's sad to see it. I guess uh, I'm not sure how much people are really buying it nowadays. I guess I don't really know if people even buy stuff like Man here. But uh, farewell to that game. So that should be. Uh, I'm sure they'll be on sale now. Like the ones that are left. So if you want to grab a copy, go ahead and do it now. Um, but uh, let's go on to our next story. Uh, this is coming from News.com or CNET. Amazon is set to be launching their streaming uh, service possibly later this month. So all signs point to Amazon.com launching a streaming service to compete with Netflix, the big, you know, movie rental service, DVD rental, or on-demand content. Uh, now, it's, you know, this has been a big rumor for a while, and uh, reports of Amazon, it says here, reports of Amazon launching a streaming service has been surfacing. Uh, back in August, the company said it, it was said to be in negotiation with film and television studios to start uh, bringing content, but has yet to be announced, you know, when it's going to be available. And it says mainly the problem is just for them to getting rights to content and stuff like that, because obviously you have to contact all these companies, Warner Brothers, all those, you know, all those companies to get licenses to, uh, you know, put out this content and let people rent it, let people, you know, stream it online and stuff like that. So um, what do you think? We, how do you think this is going to, because, you know, Amazon's not much, I guess they have their Kindle service, so that, that was something they used to compete with, like, the whole. And then they're pretty much, would you say they're dominating that, you know, the book market? Right now. Yeah, for sure. For the, the book, book uh, ebook market, they're definitely dominating. But, yeah. That... Uh, do you know if this, uh, the Amazon streaming will be more like, is it Netflix or more as a more of a, like a iTunes, pay for what you get. Mm. Uh, type of approach. I don't know. I I'm thinking. So annoying Amazon. I don't know. I don't know how you would compare it. Maybe it's probably more of a pay for what you get. Pay for what you like get. Kind of like iTunes. Yeah. Yeah, you pay like X amount and then you get to buy shows or yeah, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, series or. Mm. But then in Netflix, though, you get like unlimited. Don't you get unlimited DVD yeah. rentals? That's a monthly fee, more like a fixed plan. Yeah. But then, yeah, I, I would think Amazon, cause like, how does Amazon? I know they have an MP3 service. What's it called? Amazon MP3. Is that is that the name? Uh, something like that. Yeah, I mean their prices may be cheaper, cause Amazon tries to go for cheaper and better deals, but um. I don't know it's they and they do have you know obviously a lot of content but no I don't know if I can see them doing movies but um 
It's gonna be hard to compete with Netflix, first off, because that's already on like a lot of platforms as is. Yeah. Because um, but think... if if anyone could, it'd probably be someone like Amazon. True. True. And it says here, um, the screenshot of the uh, streaming service indicates that the service has over five thousand movies and television shows available, and the Amazon Prime Amazon Prime customers who pay seventy nine dollars a year for free two day shipping will be able to stream content from the service for free. So if you're an Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime member, you're in luck. So you'll be able to be streaming this for free, or streaming some of the content for free. Uh, so I'm I really just the problem for Amazon right now is getting all that content. They have to get all those movies, all those television shows, licensed for their you know network. Obviously, otherwise you know if you're if they're somebody's looking for a movie and it's on Amazon, they're just gonna go to Netflix or something like that. But yeah, are, are you a big uh, user of Netflix? We I don't know. I don't have it here, so I never tried it. I I had it for a while back, and really we weren't interested in the the physical DVDs. It's the streaming that's really uh, you know interesting when it comes mm-hmm. to Netflix. But when I had it, I wasn't very impressed with the online library, <laughs> like the uh, the selection. There wasn't a good selection of newer content, mm-hmm. and just in general, I mean, every time th- any time you went to go search for something that you wanted, it was only available by by mail by DVD. So, yeah, uh, not we dropped secure. it. Oh, but recently, three or four of my friends have gotten it, and they're just obsessed with it. <laughs> and they they really seem to like the online selection. And yeah, because they, they seem to think it's growing. I mean, I know it's growing, but mm. they they said it's grown a lot recently, so I might yeah. have to check it out again. And it's like available for Xbox, PS3, and Wii now. So it's like on all those different consoles yeah. and stuff like it's that. It's definitely the choice if you're a movie watcher. <laughs> yeah, as of now, yeah, true, true. But all right, uh, with that, let's move into some search engine news. Um, so as of now, Bing is up, Google down in the latest search rankings. So uh, Google isn't, I mean, Bing isn't number one as of yet, but they have made uh, some dent in the uh, market anyways. Uh, it says here, though Google is still the top king of the search engine uh, area, arena, I guess, Bing is creeping up according to the reports released yesterday by the market, research, market researcher Experian Hitwise. Uh, it says here, looking at the global search results market back in January, Google took home about 68% of all searches, which is you know obviously a huge number, more than half. But that marked down at 2% from last December. The number of searches run at Bing.com and Bing-powered sites collectively rose by 6 points, giving Microsoft search engine a 27.4% percent cut of the market 27.4 percent that's that's not a, you know a big number either but i mean it's still a considerable amount you know comp- uh for what when did Bing come out last year right or was it yeah last year uh yeah less than two years for sure less than two years and you know google's been around for how many years like five more than five at least, at least uh, like 10 since 2000 before 2000 hasn't yeah, so as of now, it says here, uh, month over month uh, percentage change. Google went down 2%. This is, in the uh, again, the month of January. Uh, Microsoft went up 6 Yahoo went down 4 And, uh, again, Bing.com is in the one they grew 21% from 10.60% in January, or December 10th to January 11th. They went to 12.81%. So a lot of people are more, you know, are starting to use Bing. But, you know, there's been a lot of tension, I guess, lately. I don't know, Josh, if you got a chance to read that story about um, how... There was like a talk about the copying of search results from Bing to Google or Google to Bing. Yeah. If you copy that was really interesting. Yeah, where like the Google engineers kind of like put fake keyword searches to see if uh, Bing would come up with them. And a couple of days later, Bing came up with the same weird search results that they kind of used as like a, a trap. So, I mean, but then I guess they're not technically, Microsoft came out, so they're not doing anything illegal. They're using, you know, they are using Google search results as, you know, or their archives to kind of provide more results to their users. But, um, I guess in technicality they weren't doing anything illegal, but I guess it's just more unori- unoriginality, I guess. But anyways, here that's just a quick uh, chart here. There's more about the charts if you want to read about Yahoo and uh, you know all all the other stuff about Bing. Um, but anyways, uh, with that let's move on to our next story, and it is about Netflix. So we talked about this not too long ago. Uh, it says here Netflix is not into ads, and this comes from the Digital Home blog over at CNET News. Uh, it says here, speaking to the Fast Company in an interview posted today, Netflix Vice President of the Corporate Communications, Steve Swazi, said to, said, sorry, said the topic of bringing advertising to the company's streaming service has been brought to the table over uh, time and time again. Uh, but I'm guessing that they're not in the favor of ad, or the he argues that they're not in the favor of ads, you know. And uh, wow, I just lost my place in the article here. Hang on. But the argument in favor of ads hasn't been at all that compelling. So it says here, in quote, every time we shoot it down, uh, so yeah, 
that's basically it. I mean, that that says it all. Um, Netflix, I, I don't know. They don't. Oh, I'm thinking about Hulu. Hulu is more the one that does like the pre-roll ads and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Or the mid-roll ads. So I, you know, I, I again, I haven't used Netflix, so I can't say much. But I know that from what I know, I've never seen an ad on, or heard from ads on Netflix, and that's good because they. You know, people pay a monthly fee, and people a lot, a lot of people don't like to see ads, especially when they're paying already a subscription basis. But what, yeah, what do you think? One, one thing that's interesting is with online things, people seem to think if you're paying for it, you shouldn't see ads. Mm. But one thing people always say is, what about the newspaper? Everyone pays for the newspaper, and there's ads all over it. True. Um, but so that's. don't you think... I would? Yeah, I guess I would argue, though, because you pay for the newspaper, but the newspaper is more like targeted... Uh, I guess like you know there's going to be ads, but it's not more intr- as obtrusive as yeah. a video ad, I guess. Yeah, because also with the newspaper, you just skip over it, but then yeah. with the video, it's it literally stops stopping you. and yeah. interrupting. It's so interrupting that, you that is a little different. Mm. One thing I would really like to see Netflix do is maybe offer some sort of free thing. And then give where, ads to it. Yeah, and have ads like uh, just a regular movie on TV would have, you know, where there's mm. every, you know, 15 minutes, there's three minutes of ads or something. I mean, and you can still generate some money off of that for sure. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to put yeah. out everything, but put out some things. Yeah, because they could at least make a dollar from that, and making a yeah. dollar from that... With um, like over hundreds of thousands it's, of it's, people. Yeah, and it's $8 a month for Netflix anyway, you know, so that's, yeah. that's the same as someone watching eight movies for free online mm. or, and i'm sure like you know, eight people will at least click it out of like more than the hundreds of thousand hits they get if they did that yeah, yeah, yeah. but um it says here also that netflix decision to say mixed to mix or nix the idea of uh bringing advertisements to the service stands in stark contrast to the strategy of always obviously it's competitive which is hulu uh they offer hulu plus which is like again the 7.99 per month subscription fee and places the ads in the content it streams it says there so Hulu's ad supported model has been met with some complaints from the users who would like to see the commercials go. However, Hulu claims on a web page detailing its business model that the advertising is necessary to keep the price of its service, uh, you know, com- obviously from it going down. So I guess, and again, you know, can't, can't complain because some people need to monetize, but um, it's good to see that Netflix doesn't need to, and, you know, they're not, uh, you know, they're not for it as of now because I guess some people really do get kind of uh, pissed when they see those pre-roll ads or something like that. You know, on YouTube. Also, also like Netflix is in such a prime position right now. I mean, yeah, they wouldn't want to screw it up. <laughs> they're basically the only contender in that market. So mm. as long as they keep people happy, they're keeping all their customers. You yeah. Know? And people on Hulu, they're getting mad about those commercials. So I'm so sure some of them will start switching to Netflix. Yeah, and, you know, Netflix is everywhere now. And just like on so many set top, set top boxes and all that. Yeah, the only advantage to Hulu over Netflix is Hulu... Like two days after a show airs, it'll be on Hulu. Whereas yeah. Netflix, Takes you have to wait for the the DVD of the season to come out. Yeah, you have to wait for you know, six months later. True, true. So if you want your content right away, I guess you can go for Hulu. But if you know, if you can wait, and I think sometimes you know, if you especially if it's a TV show, I guess it's kind of better to wait sometimes so you can watch it all. You know, like right away together. Like especially yeah, if it's as a long series. As, as long as it's not something like Lost where there's spoilers. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 definitely. So if it's something you want to keep up with, I guess Hulu would be your choice but as of now netflix is doing a great job in its market and i'm sure they don't want to screw it up by adding ads all of a sudden all right um with that let's move into some uh internet browsing news and that is this is from the download blog over at download.com or download.cnet.com ie9 ie9 came out the rrc or the release candidate and uh it debuts with the do not track feature so uh, this is the next generation of Internet Explorer, and it's ready to be uh, for the public over at Microsoft. Now, I heard a little bit about this over at uh, Windows Weekly Podcast by Paul Thurot. He talked some, uh, about the new feature in Internet Explorer 9, and it says there's a mass. First off, there's more improvements than just this feature, but uh, it's going to be available for um, 32-bit Windows 7, I think 64-bit Windows 7, uh, 32-bit Vista, and 64-bit Vista. So I'm not sure. I guess they kind of took out support for XP. But it says, among the most notable enhancements is the new ActiveX filter, expanded for support for HTML5, for which is you know the future technology standards, and the advertising tracking protection. Uh, now, this was also released in Firefox 4, but um, I think, uh, so let me read more into this to give you guys a little insight before I talk more about it. But um, so, when you turn this on, you can turn off or turn on ActiveX filtering and it says here that you know there's some screenshots here you can read about it. it says some content on the site is filtered use the button below to configure the filtering options 
Um, now, if I'm correct, now, doesn't Firefox... I forgot what Firefox does different. I mean, do you remember what Firefox does different? Because I know IE does something that's like... It, uh... What is it here? Let me try and find it here. It says here... Sorry, go ahead. Like, what are you referring to that it does different? No, like, in, the, uh, in, the, in the blocking, I remember, like... I know, I like, in... Do not track? Yeah, I think... I think IE9 is the one that allows you, like, it doesn't allow the content to track, you know, or do the tracking cookies or anything like that. But I think in Firefox, it allows them to track or whatever, something like that. Like, something with targeted ad. Isn't that... So they're blocking with stuff like targeted ads and stuff like that, right? This would be blocking... Yeah, this, this do not track thing is a relatively new kind of concept. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure what it is, if it's like a concept or a kind of a group mm -hmm. or just a, like a belief type thing that you know like tracking advertisers tracking like what pages you visit yeah and then like for example recently i looked at some products on newegg and then i went and watched a technology video on youtube and the ad in the on the side was for newegg for the products i was looking at you know like mm -hmm. i was looking at uh, some cpus and stuff and it was for those so i think it it this do not track would disable them from linking mm, one thing that to i one. yeah that i looked at those those CPUs and yeah. that I'm the same person. Yeah, and you see this a lot too, just like, uh, for example, I was actually, I bought a, uh, when the first Strike Map Pack came out for Call of Duty Black Ops, I needed a uh, point card for Xbox Live. And um, I actually found a site called PC Game Supply and I bought from them and they were legit, you know, it went through, it worked, I got my card. And I noticed um, after I purchased from them, literally like uh, a whole week and even up to now, I go to YouTube, I go to you know any other site that has AdSense ads on it. My first mm -hmm. ad that pops up is PC Game Supply, and it's like you know you need Microsoft points, need you know live buy here. And obviously before I wasn't getting this, and that's again targeted advertising. You know they know I bought from here, and you know I uh, and since I bought from there, you know, I was on a Gmail account. I guess I used to log in. Uh, it was able to. Uh, advertise that to me again later on because you know they think that you may buy again from them if you know especially if it's being advertised to you but um anyways i do want to read this quote here it says that um or is it, i just lost my place oh here it goes it says if you go to the gear menu and this is an ie9 uh and then the safety sub menu there's an option for tracking protection clicking it opens the manage add-on windows and defaults the new tracking protection tab from which you can add sites that you want to block once the feature has been enabled, simply just start browsing. If you go back to the list after checking out, out a few sites, you ought to see that the list has auto-populated. The configurable number below the main list allows you to set your tolerance for being tracked. If you set it to 3, for example, the tracking protection will wait until it sees a tracker in on three or more sites that are that uh, sorry on three or more sites before blocking it uh, and it goes on to say here also in the new activex filter which can be used to block all activex content and then selectively activate it on you know a persistent site basis so maybe you, you know you may want it to be open on this site you may not want it to be you know the site to be uh tracking you or whatever um it says here for people unfamiliar with the activex technology it's potentially dangerous to function but it fully it but it requires full access to the operating system from the browser that is running. The new ActiveX filter gives you the ability to restrict ActiveX on a per site basis with a toggle on the location bar. Um, and then again, goes into talking about that, uh, how to get to it. But the last thing I want to read here, it says here, performance gains have been traumatic in IE9 uh, with the Microsoft's new JavaScript engine, Chakra, and the release candidate continues with that, with, you know, with that uh, new engine. IE9 also replaces, or now places the right <laughs> Sorry, IE nine, IE nine RC now places right in the same ballpark for speed as Firefox, Chrome, and Safari. Finally, you know it's kind of up to speed with the you know those third party browsers. Um, but other than that, uh, I'm guessing so. There's, it's been a huge overhaul, obviously, and you know a lot of these browsers you're seeing them now, you know, preparing for HTML five and for future technologies to come, and they're adding you know their own new features. Firefox four has a new interface. They have this, uh, you know, the same type of do not track system. Uh, Chrome has that, you know, that simplicity. All the browsers have their same oh. thing, but um, I don't know. Uh, do you think this makes IE9 like IE any more appealing to? Uh, it's definitely a great feature to have because if if you want to opt out from that kind of stuff, you should definitely have the option to be able to. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm not sure. You know, it seems to be the trend that IE users usually aren't as technology savvy Techno as like people use um, firefox yeah so <laughs> they they also might not be as you know 
quick to go enable that feature. Maybe if mm. on the first launch it asks you, um, yeah, that would be good. Also, Google Chrome, there's an extension made by Google to opt out, um, you know, op opt out of this uh, ad customization. Oh, really? Nice. But, um, and I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Right, but I was good. just thinking, I doubt Google builds this into Chrome. I bet they keep it as an extension because so people, it's yeah. it's in Google's best interest to have your ads customized. Yeah. Um, because they, they can make more money. <laughs> they run AdSense. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this will probably remain as an extension, just yeah. for Google's uh, own good. They won't. But make it's it still in. it's still nice that they put out this extension. Yeah, at least they did um, that. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. They won't bake it in just because the fact that they may lose money and that if more people, you know block yeah. these customized uh, results but uh, i mean that is a very interesting thing and again um it's interesting to see that i don't know it doesn't mention here about support for xp but i would think there's still a lot of people on xp and i would think well yeah, surely like, it, it would work with xp yeah so i'm hoping at least anyways um my opinion use firefox use chrome even you know or opera right? any of those browsers are better i think in my opinion than internet explorer but hey it's yeah. uh it's your choice Anyways, here, let's get into our last story of the day before we get into our picks. And here's some Apple news. The only Apple news in there. Surprisingly, there wasn't that much Apple news this <laughs> podcast. But anyways, we talked a little. I talked a little about this, I think, two podcasts ago. And uh, that's the rumors about the Mac Pros and the new Mac Pros possibly coming. Now, this comes from Mac, Mac Pro. Rumors. Sorry. sorry what did you say? Oh, Mac sorry. Book Mac Pro. Pros. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> uh, as of March 1st is a possible date for the new MacBook Pros. Sorry. Um as we approach the expected updates for the MacBook Pro line, uh, we start to hear, you know, possible release dates, and uh, these are typically, you know, obviously they they can be fifty fifty, they can be false, they can be, you know, uh, true obviously, but you're never too sure with Apple, um, especially because Steve Jobs now is he's on medical out leave of absence, so uh, if they're gonna, you know, if they if they do a big keynote for it, or if they do, you know, uh, just kind of like an online release i guess is that what you is, is that what you call an online release where they just kind of like yeah. on their home page yeah the, they've done that occasionally and i bet that's probably what they do with these macbook pros yeah because it's uh, it's rumored they'll have the new sandy bridge processors yeah and i know there's a delay on those because was they're like uh there's like a problem with the chip or not i don't know if it's the chipset yeah with the chipset for the the sata ports yeah but so. also something that's rumored is they might be getting the ssds from the MacBook Airs, uh -huh. um, in the and they also might be removing the optical drive. Removing that's, that's on the MacBook too. Pro. Hmm. Um, which I think, I think the SSD is more of a, a strong rumor than the optical drive being removed. Yeah. But uh, both of them are rumors. Yeah, I know. I mean, a lot of people went over like, I don't know. If you think about it, though, like, okay, so first, I know this is a big issue in the MacBook Airs. They lost their CD drive. I think, like personally, me, I how many how often do you use your CD drive? Do you think? Yeah, I've the only time I ever use it is burning a CD burning for like, Ubuntu a friend, for or me. or for an OS install. Yeah, yeah Ubuntu like, or a Linux dish yeah. or something. But um, other than that, you know, I don't watch DVDs on my computer. Uh, I think a lot of yeah. stuff is more you get it digitally now than you do from. Yeah, a with the, the Mac App Store, especially with the Mac App Store, there's yeah, they're gonna no need up. for them. Yeah. And you don't need that would also, yeah. um, what would be great about that is that would force Adobe to start using the Mac App Store. Because they can't go through with CD software. Because they can't use CDs unless they yeah. use uh, USB drives. True. and um, uh, if, Or something like that. Yeah, and if they don't go through that, they'll definitely probably, what do you call that, uh, do th they'll do the whole s uh, super drive thing, you know, they do with the MacBook Airs. Or like yeah. uh, external uh, DVD drive, or of course, you can always do the uh, over-the-air you know, using another computer CD drive to install. But um, anyways, the article here says March 1st falls on Tuesday, which is a typical Apple release day. Um, the Ma or Apple re for Apple releases, I should say. Uh, that the Mac the MacBook Pro was last updated in April of 2010, so it is a little outdated. Uh, so it's been due for an update. And it says, while there's been concern about the new models with the delay, obviously, because of the Intel manufacturing issues, um, it just says that the latest report claims that the delay will be minimal, so not too long. Um, it says here that the MacBook Pro will likely be adopting, like again, that new Intel Sandy Bridge, Sandy Bridge processors, um, and you also expect the same that some of the models may design take design cues again from the MacBook Air, like uh, Josh mentioned here, 
So, and again, with SSD, like you said, that will make it obviously much more faster if you give a default SSD. Because I don't think you, you don't get a default SSD, it's just a SATA drive, right? The MacBook yeah, is. and there's there's an option currently to add an SSD, SSD but, but it's, it's like 550 or something. Yeah. It's ridiculously expensive. And with an SSD. And also, uh-huh, go ahead. yeah, it'd be amazing to see how fast mm. those things really are with an SSD. Because the, the MacBook Airs are, you know, I haven't ever tried yeah, one out but they're fast. or pushed one really. But they're rumored to be really fast, and they're just using uh, older Core 2 Duos. Yeah, right? definitely. These will be better for, you, you know, a lot of people use MacBook Pros and more video editing. They do the whole media thing. Um, so definitely this will be obviously much more faster processing power than the new Sandy Bridge. The SSDs will make them faster in terms of write and read speeds. I mean, I have an SSD in my MacBook, the first generation, it runs great. So, and obviously it's also going to make it lighter and safe space because SSDs are much more thinner. I think the Intel X25M SSD that I have, if it's out of its casing, it's the size of a pencil in terms, in terms of like width and stuff like that. So it's pretty thin. Yeah. And especially if they use the same SSDs from the MacBook Airs, they're built on. Yeah. Would well, that be interesting if they were built on the motherboard? Because one thing that's nice about MacBook Airs is you being able to upgrade the hard drive yeah. yourself. Yeah. So definitely in the MacBook Pros, this is just going to make the MacBook Pros much more, not only lighter in saving space, but much more powerful. So, you know, taking yeah. our saving space and making it much more powerful, which is what Apple is all about. All right, um, with that, I think that concludes all our stories. But before we leave you guys, we do want to give you our picks a week. Every week, we or every podcast, we do, uh, basically every week, we uh, give you guys a pick, uh, whether it's hardware, software, and application. And uh, mine happened this week. Let me put my iPad here off the uh, stand. It's a application. Uh, now, this is one that's been out, I think came out last week or maybe two weeks ago, and it's called The Daily now. You may have heard this. It's a... Uh, it's a big new iPad app. This is the new news app that a lot of people have been talking about. Oh, sorry, you hear it go off there. Uh, it's the new newspaper app. It's uh, basically a new issue is going to be delivered to you. As of now, you get two weeks free, I believe. Um, and once they start giving, it's going to be a paid model soon, but it's going to be 99 cents a week, which isn't too bad, a dollar a week. Um, so that would be $4 a month, which is really cheap, I guess, if you're paying for news. You know, if you already pay for something on a newspaper and you want to go digital, the Daily, um, John Gruber, I think, and them talked about this. Uh, or not John Gruber, sorry. Uh, who is it? What's, uh, what's the guy's name who launched that? Do you remember his name? Rupert, Rupert Murdoch. Murdoch. Oh, there you go. Sorry, John. Uh, I was thinking about getting fireball. But anyways, um, so they want to bring uh, news to the iPad the way it's meant to be delivered. That was our main you know, project or aim for you know this app. And obviously the Daily, because it's going to be bringing daily content. As you can see here, um, you have below here your news, your gossip, your opinion articles, your arts and life articles, apps and games and sports. Along with that, you have a little menu here to uh, look at some you know like hot key buttons for stuff like settings and stuff like that. Um, along with that, you have uh, a view here of each page, and these pages are really nicely designed, and a lot of them are really interactive. That's what they mainly went for. So you have your weather up there. You can this is a cover. You can flip through in a cover flow esque type thing. You can see the table of contents. And you can see the daily, it says here, shows you here the gestures to use in the magazine. So I'm just going to go ahead and, for example, click this one right here. So this one, this article is about the day Mubarak fell. This is about, I believe, Egypt, the Egypt article. So if I click it here, uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, you can see the article here, but you can, uh, sometimes they have different methods of way you swipe. Like if you swipe up, you get, you know, you can read more about the story. Or in this case, if it's a video, you can just click the button the play button and it will start loading the movie and this is you know directly from the daily's website so and now this is going to be something that's going to be constant news because this is actually something they, they hired a full team of reporters to uh, you know to set up and bring you daily content and updates for uh you know your stories so you know, the text is really easy to read it's uh really nice for an ipad you can obviously go into landscape if you want to read it that way um, and there's just so much news here, and uh, again, it's going to be updated daily, like I said. Um, and, um, you know, there's just really huge amounts of, um, you know, the ads and everything are interactive. For example, this is an ad for the Land Rover. You can just tap anywhere on the globe that you want to go. And, and from there, you know, it just goes into the globe and, you know, does its thing. But anyways, uh, I can talk more and more about this app, but I don't want to play all these ads for you guys. Anyways, it's a great app. Great if you love reading your news and you want to try and get a digital format, you know, holding the iPad for something every, you know, waking up and just downloading the latest issue of the daily and checking out your news. Do try it out. Really cool. Uh, really cool gestures. And everything's readable. It's not, you know, 
people think it would be legible, it would be blurry, you'd have to zoom in. Everything is <laughs> really, really legible. I know you guys can't really see because of the glare, but trust me, check it out daily. It's free right now in the App Store. All right, with that, Josh, you can go along with your pick. My pick is the new Google Translate app for the iPhone. So recently they released this for the iPhone. It was previously out on Android, and um, so it's got a lot of cool features. The coolest feature is being able to talk to it. So you can press this voice button. Hello? Okay, it picked up a different word. <laughs> you'll see, you can, say, you can say a word, and it will translate it to the language of your choice. So, um, and once you're done with that, you can also star um, specific items. So I can go back and star this. And so now if I go to my starred page, you'll see up here it's got my starred translation. And it'll also save your translation history. So if you have a lot of things you you translate often or, <laughs> or something, you can uh, go back and see. But what's really cool, you can translate something, and then when you're done, you can press this, and it'll actually play the voice. You probably can't hear that, but it'll play the word in, different language. in that ah, language nice, for you. So you could actually go back and forth and have an actual conversation with someone. Oh, I, I remember seeing the demo language. on this, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a, a really cool app. It could definitely save you in some, in some situations, some random situations. Yeah. But uh, uh, just pretty cool app, and it's free in the App Store, and it's just called Google Translate. All right, definitely I'll have to check this out. I was downloading it right now as we are talking about this. But um, definitely, I mean, me overseas, being in Japan, and I'm not obviously fluent in Japanese, I will have to check this out. All right, guys, so we will leave download links. Again, our picks for these weeks are both apps, his for the iPhone, mine for the iPad. So do check those out in the um, uh, podcast show notes. And of that, of course, don't forget to go over to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash digital dojos. You can also follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash digital dojos. And, of course, our homepage at digitaldojos.com. You can get the full reviews, how-tos, tutorials, all there, along with the podcast show notes and stuff like that. Um, any links you want to plug, Josh? Uh, not currently. Not currently? Yeah. I oh, oh, no, you don't have a site? Do you have uh, Wii 493 still running, or is that nothing's going on yet there? No. Nope. Nothing's going on? Nothing. Right. Oh, but if you do want to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Wii 493, and you can follow my personal account at twitter.com slash kidguru. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. This is episode 16 of the Dojo Cast. We'll catch you guys next week.